Hi guys, welcome for another video. I'm Jess and I'm one of the designers here at Sizzix. Today I'm going to show you three different projects perfect for Mother's Day. So I'm going to show you everything from start to finish, how to utilize our stencil and stamp tool and our scoring board and trim it to make three amazing homemade projects, homemade gifts that you can gift to your mother or the special woman in your life this Mother's Day. And it's going to be kind of pamper themed. So it's going to be super exciting and let's get started. Okay, so the first project that I'm going to do is I'm going to actually show you how to make a candle wrap and create your own candle that is going to be great for lighting in the evenings for your mom or your special lady to kind of relax. So what you want to do is you want to take a glass kind of container. Now you want one ideally with a flat kind of edge all the way around and this means what we're going to pop on the outside is going to sit nice and flush to it. So that's quite important. You don't need a candle already in it. I'm going to show you how to kind of make your own kind of candle element to go inside. So what I like to do is I actually want to stencil a design onto here but I use stencil film so that it's slightly see-through and transparent. So we're gonna stencil a design on there and it means that we can still see the glow from the candle um, coming from the inside. So the stencil film that I'm gonna use is our Sizzix stencil film. They come in A4 sheets and I'm going to be using the Geo Crystals stencil, which is an A6 size stencil. And I'm going to use like half of the stencil film sheet at a time because that's about the size and what you want is about four of these stencils that will be able to wrap around the entirety of that candle or whatever jar that you are oh I'll just put that down there whatever jar you are working with and the best way to figure this out actually is a little tip whatever jar or candle base that you're working with take a piece of plain paper so I've got two pieces of paper taped together and I've like wrapped them around to figure out what the kind of perimeter, or is it circumference? I'm not sure. I was very bad at maths in school. <laughs> um, to figure out um, how much kind of paper I need to fit all the way around. And this is kind of going to be my guide or my template. So I'm going to pop that to one side. And like, let's get to the exciting bit where we're stenciling. So I've got my stencil and stamp tool here. I'm going to place my stencil adapter on and then I'm going to place the stencil film underneath and make it sure it's aligned up with that sticky grid sheet base. Now you'll barely see it because obviously it is transparent, it is see-through but that's okay, that's the whole point. <laughs> and then I'm going to take my stencil and I'm going to stencil it layer by layer. So which one is my number one? Here we go. So obviously you want to stencil from number one all the way to number three using whatever kind of inks you like. I'm just going to use um, Distress inks today but again completely up to you and I tend to work from light to dark when I am stenciling. Same um, that I would do on a kind of opaque piece of paper, same for this stencil film. You want to go from light to dark so you can see your darker colours on the top. And it's the same process again, even though we're working on that stencil film, same process, applying the colour in circular motions using our multi-tool and our blending head. So once you're done, you've obviously done all your four layers and you're going to end up with something that looks like this. So hopefully, let's see if I can hold it up so you can kind of see the colours through that stencil film and it means when we place it around our jar, we're going to be able to see through it. Okay, so also just for reference, the colours that I used were um, 
pickled raspberry, sponge sugar, kitsch flamingo, and abandoned coral. I'm going for a pink theme, but I'm gonna show you another example where you can change up the colors if you want to. If um, the person you're gifting doesn't particularly like pink, that's fine, we can completely change that up. So you wanna kinda let that sit and dry for a little second, so we're not kind of smudging it around. And then what we can do is start to trim it down and attach it all together. So we're gonna create that ring to go around our candle base. So I'm just gonna grab my scoring board and trimmer, my trusty scoring board and trimmer, which is under here. And what we wanna do is trim it down. So actually I'm gonna place it that way for you. There we go. So I'm going to trim along either side. So I'm trimming off the excess stencil film. And then what you wanna do on the other two sides is you wanna leave a little bit of a gap where there is no pattern. And this means when we go to stick them together, we can place the tape along those lines. Now, I'm gonna do it on both sides. You won't have to keep them on both sides. We probably will end up trimming them off, but just to help you for now, do it on both sides and it's gonna make your life a little bit easier because then you can kind of pick and choose which one goes where. So I'm just gonna place that down and trim that down to size and then I'll show you how we attach them. Now I've chosen this stencil in particular because it aligns perfectly. It's a continuous pattern so it means that when we go and join them all together you can really get it aligned and it's going to look like a really nice seamless pattern all the way around. You can use other designs if you have a different stencil or you want to use a different stencil from the collection. There's so many beautiful ones, um, but the ones that are the kind of patterns are gonna work the best. So once you've got these all trimmed down, so you want four of them for my size, I'm gonna take my tape. Now I like to take a double-sided tape and find that that's the best way to join them up. Now you can see I've put a line or an extra tab on both sides and when they do join up, we are gonna create a pattern. But actually on one side, because I don't need that tab, I'm gonna trim an extra tab off. So it's just kind of checking how your design matches up and checking which tabs you need and which tabs you don't. But it's best to just keep them um, before you go fully aligning everything because it just means you have options. So let's take some of this tape. I like to use double-sided tape rather than glue as well because I find it's less messy. You really want the, this to be as seamless as you possibly can get it, basically. So we're gonna place that tape along that tab that we've created. Peel that off. And then take the other one where we chopped that tab off and align that. Now, you wanna kind of Take your time, make sure it's fully aligned. And everything kind of matches up. And then once you've got two joined together, perfectly aligned, you could then go down and trim along to make sure it's perfectly the right height for your jar. Cause obviously that's still a little bit high, so I can go down and trim it. But at least now when I've got two tape together, I only have to do a couple of cuts. So let me show you ones that I've got that are kind of finished and ready to go on. Oh, I've got stuff everywhere. So I've got my pink one that I just need to join my last two pieces up. Let's just do that now. And they're at the perfect height both of them so they're going to be the perfect height for my jar and you want to be gentle with the stencil film as well because it is very delicate it's quite thin you don't want to go ripping it or anything 
so just take your time. And there we go, we have our pink all ready to wrap around, but I wanted to show you another example of a brown one that you could totally do if you prefer and you need a different colorway. So that would just wrap around like so, and then join at the back with a little bit more tape and make sure it's all aligned. I think I just need to trim this one down and then I'm going to attach it. Now again, you can use your template that we used at the beginning to make sure everything is in the right place. So I'm thinking, okay, I need a tab and I need to trim that down. So I just need to trim that little bit of excess down. So I'm just gonna mark that off and trim it down and then we'll attach it onto our jar. Now I have chopped that down. It's going to perfectly wrap around that candle. Now you could do it in a way that we just place a piece of tape here and um, kind of attach it so we've got a full ring that'll just kind of slide on and fit perfectly nice and snug. Or you could use a kind of spray adhesive, a spray mount that will also work and it won't kind of ruin the stencil film. That's probably a more permanent option. And then what I tend to do is take like a lacquer spray or something like that and then go over the top once it's attached and then I'm just going to attach some tape while I talk to you guys. Um, and then that means it's nice and secure. And obviously this goes without saying we're wrapping the outside of our jar or our candle um, glass. We don't want to put it on the inside because then it's going to burn and set on fire. <laughs> this way it is super usable and it can actually be used as a candle because it's on the outside, it's not going to do anything. So I'm just going to do this with a tape just to show you kind of how easy it is. We wanna make sure it's fully aligned. I'm gonna get nice and close. This end bit is not gonna match up perfectly because I've had to trim down one of them, but you get the idea. Now, hopefully we can see that that has got a gorgeous design all the way around. And then obviously last but not least, you wanna place in your wicks and make it usable. So I just take these um, wicks, you can get them at any craft store online. I place a little glue dot on the bottom. This is not necessary, but it means that then they're not gonna go wiggle about in the bottom of your candle. And you wanna measure them to the right height. So I'm just gonna take some scissors and just kind of see where I need to chop. Okay, so I need about that much off. And we can kind of trial and error it. But let's say I'm gonna do three, because I'm gonna do a three wick candle. I'm gonna place all of those inside and you can take that little excess that we chopped from the first one and use it to chop the other two so they're all the same height as well, which means it's gonna look nice and polished and professional. So again, I'm gonna place these little glue dots on the base. It's a little fiddly, but I promise it will be worth it in the end. <laughs> and this is such a cost-effective way of creating, especially one of these large candles, like I'm sure you're aware in all the kind of home stores and everything, how much these kind of larger, especially like three wick kind of candles can end up costing. And this way, it's a super cheap way of doing it. So now the magic ingredient, you wanna take some candle sand wax. Now you wanna make sure that is the sand type and it's like a self melting wax. You could go and like melt it in a pan and then pour it in and do it all yourself. That seems like hard work to me. <laughs> so the easiest way, it's already in like really fine candle sand and we're just gonna fill up that space. And it means that when we go to light our candle, it's gonna melt the wax itself. So we just wanna fill up the entire space until it's at the top and the wicks are all covered. And you can probably see 
why we've done it as a like a transparent effect around the outside as I add this because we can see the color underneath which I've chosen a white candle sand to make sure that that works and then as it glows from the inside and the wax goes down we're going to get a really nice kind of stained glass effect okay I think I've probably got enough in there make sure it's all level but honestly it's like the easiest way to create one of these candles I'm just gonna try and give it a wiggle there we go and look how professional that looks maybe we can go ahead and light it later but how cute is that obviously you can change up the color like I said you could do a brown effect a pink effect blues whatever you want to do change up the color by changing up the inks but that is the first self-care handmade gift that nobody would think is handmade and it really is super easy once you get the hang of it guys so that is our first gift going into my mother's day um self-care pamper box we're now going to move on to gift number two okay so for gift number two i'm still going to use have i got it in packaging still there i'm still going to use that geo crystals stencil so we're utilizing that same stencil for two different kinds of gifts. But what I'm gonna do this time is I'm actually gonna stencil it onto some texture roll. Now, this comes in a larger size and a smaller size, and I'm gonna use the white because I want my design to show up nice and strong. And then I'm gonna use a different color um, on the back because I'm actually gonna make a little bookmark. You'll see it all come together. But then I'm gonna use a different color on the back to kind of have that contrast and it comes in multiple different colors and um, we have gold rose gold like all the metallics and then we have some colors and um kind of basic colors like white gray black um not black sorry white gray brown <laughs> um, so you can kind of choose the colors but on one side at least if we're stenciling you want to use the white it's really nice and thick um, and sturdy which is why I'm using it because I am going to make a bookmark out of this and if we're going to be using it all the time you want something that's going to withstand the test of time and um, it's just a lot sturdier than paper so I'm going to make sure that's kind of rolled as flat as I can then I'm going to place that again on to my scoring board uh, sorry my stencil and stamp tool and then I'm going to bring in that Geo Crystals stencil, and I'm gonna stencil it in exactly the same colors that I did that candle wrap, in exactly the same way um, with my blending tool, but it's gonna show up a little bit stronger because it's on the texture roll. Now we've got our last layer all done. You are obviously gonna end up something like this so we've got our pattern it's really nice and bold on that white texture roll um, and we're going to use this as the kind of front of our bookmark so what I'm now going to do is I'm going to die cut it now you get you can totally die cut this texture roll um, not too like intricate dies or anything like that but I'm going to use a framelit so it's going to cut out perfectly and I'm going to use a heart framelit and I'm going to cut that out because this is going to sit on the corner on the edge of my book page and you're going to be able to see it um, when I attach it onto a book. So this is the perfect kind of 90 degree angle that we want to work with and it's going to slot on the edge. So I'm going to die cut that using my Big Shot machine and then I'm going to take some of the pink texture roll and I'm going to die cut that and this is going to sit on the back of my bookmark. we go we have our two little hearts so they're going to sit back to back um, on my, my bookmark but what I also want to do 
is I want to add an initial or a letter to it to make it super personalized for Mother's Day. So I'm gonna take this gorgeous Lisa Jones alphabet. This is the serif alphabet. Now you could use whatever alphabet you have or you prefer to use. I just think this one's really, really pretty. <laughs> and I'm gonna take some rose gold cardstock. I'm just gonna move this out of the way while I do this. Attach a little bit of uh, Sizzix adhesive sheet to the back because I want to make sure this is really nice and flush to that heart that I'm going to have it sit on. Oh, pardon me. And where are my scissors gone? There we are. And instead of using glue, this is going to make it a lot more neat. And I'm going to cut out an M for mom, but obviously you could do, I don't know, an initial for whoever it is you are gifting this to. Do your own initial if you're making one for yourself. But I'm gonna do an M this time around. And then we've got our initial there. So let me just take this machine away. And what I'm going to do is place a little bit of tape on the corners and you only want to tape the two straight edges of that heart. So again, where have I got my tape? And you want a really thin piece of tape and you want to do it on the very edge of those right angles. Okay. And then we're going to stick those two together perfectly aligned. There we go. And it's important that we want to keep this side open. And what I tend to do after this, not a necessary step, but it does make it super, super durable, is I like to take my sewing machine and I like to just run a stitch on those two kind of straight edges. And it means that it's going to be super secure and stay in place. And that way it's not going to come apart and I've kind of like doubled it with the tape and with the stitching. And that means you're going to end up with something like this. So I've got a really thin stitch along here. I hope you can see that. It's, you'll probably see it better on the other side. So there's just a stitching on there. And then I'm going to take my M, peel off the back end. That way I don't have to use any glue. Really gently. And place that on here. And bear in mind which way you need it to sit. Um, so there we go. For us in the UK, it's gonna sit on this side, but it might be different for you guys. So I'm gonna take my book and then just on one of the pages, I can then open that up and slot that over the edge and that's gonna save my place in my book. And what you can also do is obviously gift um, the book to your mother or your loved one as well and that can go in the self-care hamper so there you have your bookmark perfectly done again I've done a brown one with my mum's initial on there as well so again to match the other option that we did for the candle wrap so there's loads of different ways that you can do it again by changing up the color and personalizing it but how cute is that um, and it's just going to save that place in um, a book for your special somebody just with a little personal touch so that is the second gift that is going in our hamper how cute is this looking already we've got a really nice theme going i'm going to show you the last one and it's going to be a gorgeous flower in a handmade box and it's going to be perfect so we'll move on to the next one 
Okay, last but not least, I want to show you guys how to make a gorgeous boxed flower. Now, obviously, for Mother's Day, quite a lot of people are gifting whole bunches of flowers, and if you're gonna hand make a whole bunch of flower, go for it, it will look incredible. But most people don't have that kind of time or patience, I know I don't. So what a really nice thing is to create a single paper flower, and we're gonna make a really nice bespoke box to go. Uh, for this flower to go into. And obviously for that, we use the scoring board and trimmer earlier. We're gonna use that now. And when we are creating a box, we can bring in our trusty, I'm just gonna pop the brightness up on my phone, the trusty box generator on the Sizzix website. And you can pop in the exact length, width, height, lid depth, everything that you could want for your particular box, um, your particular flower. And then we can scroll down and pray press generate and it's going to give us the exact measurements that we need for the box and for the lid. So for my box I'm going to take a piece of pink cardstock and I'm going to be working with a stock size of 21 centimeters by 29. It's important to know if you want to do it in inches, you can do and you can just change it up at the top as well. Um, and then we're going to score along four centimeter lines. So 29, let's just trim that down by what are we looking at? 21. So 21 is pretty much the length or the um, width of an A4 piece of cardstock and that's why I did it this way. Um, so then I'm going to take out my scoring tool and bring that down and I'm going to score on every four centimetre line. Now this is for the base, for the box. and we have that and when I go to fold them up I'm going to trim along the tabs and it's going to all measure up and this is going to be the base of my box. Now for the lid, let me just show you guys, we want 19.2 by 27.2. Now again your measurements might change but this is what I am working with so 27.2 Check that's aligned and 19.2 and this is going to be my box lid and I'm doing this in a slightly different tone so I've got a kind of two-tone box and I'm using some of the rose gold opulent cardstock so this is going to need score lines of three because I want a slight gap where my lid meets the base of my box so again three centimeter lines Turn it round. You can see those score lines really beautifully on that card. How clean they are. And again, I'm going to fold along those lines. But before I do that, I'm going to trim down some of those tabs. So it's going to join up really nicely. So you want to trim on every single side. And then when we go to fold, I'll just show you one. Let's fold that up. We can use that tab we've just created to fold and I'm going to use a hot glue gun to stick all of those corners down and create the lid and the base for my box. Okay, so now we've got our lid and our base that's going to sit on there. And you can see we've got a little bit of a kind of change in depth so we can see the bottom box as well but it's still going to sit perfectly on top of one another. Now for the inside we're obviously going to create a flower to pop inside. I've got one that is kind of almost finished to show you but we don't want that flower to be moving around or anything like that so you want to create a little extra piece that's going to sit inside and it's going to house your flower. Now to do that, you want to take the measurements that you used for the length and the width of your original box that you made, but you want to make it slightly smaller. So 
let's get up the measurements that we use. I'm just gonna grab it up on my phone. So we used uh, a 21 piece of uh, 21 by 29 piece of cardstock for our base, okay? Um, and then we scored four time, uh, four centimeters in on each side. So it, you need to do a little bit of maths and you need to take away the scoring element because obviously we don't want that large piece of cardstock because we don't need these large wide edges. I'm just gonna do like a centimeter on each side just so it sits slightly above the base. And we need it ever so slightly like 0.2 centimeters smaller once we've taken off those edges just to make sure it sits nice and snug inside. So we've got um, 29 and 21 and I've gone down to 22.8 and 14.8 and that's going to give me a one centimeter edge so I'm going to do a one centimeter lid uh, kind of depth as well. So it just takes a little bit of maths but I promise you it's not difficult to do. So again, I'm gonna take that piece of cardstock. Where's my little piece of paper that just had my measurements on? There we go. <laughs> so we're gonna do, for my particular one, we're gonna do 22.8, because we had it 29 before, so I've taken off, um, so I took off eight, which is my two sides, and that left me with 21. I believe, yes. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna add one each to the side and then take away like a 0.2 of a centimeter. So that works out to 22.8. Really hope that makes sense to you guys. <laughs> and then 14.8 here. And then we do wanna do one centimeter scores. So it's just gonna sit. But if you've got a, a more deeper box, you could do a two centimeter score, then it's gonna sit two centimeters from the base of your box. Just takes a little bit of working out. But we're gonna end up with this little section to place our flower in. And obviously once you've done that, we're gonna make those little cuts and we're gonna fold it and create our um, box. However, you want these two little slots in the center to get your flower stem into. And then what you wanna do for that is we're just going to take our trimmer section. We're gonna go about an inch in from each side and do a little score. So we're gonna pop oh, without it moving. And I haven't cut all the way to the edge. We want it in the middle, okay? And then I'm gonna move it up about just shy of an inch, maybe. Popping it in again. And then bring it out, okay? And that's gonna give us that element that sits up. If I pop the scoring board and trimmer tool there, you can see how our flower is going to slot in perfectly, like so. So once you've got your flower made, it's gonna sit in this slot. And then along here, what you can do is you can write whatever you want to. You could write, I love you, you could write happy Mother's Day, whatever you want, you can pop whatever sentiment you want on there. I'll show you a different color version. Since I've been doing everything in pinks, and browns and golds as well. We've got a lovely white flower in there with our Happy Mother's Day sentiment. And you could add whatever flower you want in there, guys. It doesn't have to be a specific flower. I have popped in the um, peony um, dye just because I find it's a really nice, easy flower to put together, particularly if you are a beginner. So you can cut, the, uh, cut these out kind of multiple times, and then you can actually take the tool from the scoring board and trimmer tool, and you can use this to sculpt those petals. So that little slot there, we're gonna place that through the paper, hold it at the base, pull up and curve. And that's gonna create that dimension to all those petals 
that you need. And I just end up using different variations of the same kind of tone of cardstock. So I've gone from darker pink to lighter pink and then use a little bit of iridescent fun in the center. And again, I've done the same for the white one. I've used a ivory to white and then a little bit of shimmer in the center. And then you can just place it inside your box, place your lid on, let's get my pink one, place it inside my box. Once you've got your lovely message or sentiment or whatever you want on there, and it should slot in perfectly like so. And when you're thinking about actually the bo the depth of your box um, in the very beginning, you want to think about how um, kind of thick your flower is going to be and how tall it's going to be. So maybe make your flower first if you're wanting to make one of these boxed flowers and then you can create your box obviously around it. So let's place my lid on here. I've got a nice shiny rose gold lid. And then what I actually did is I took some of that pink texture roll that we use for the back of our bookmark to create a little kind of wrap and then a little bit of ribbon and that just kind of secures it all in place. Oh, it should do. <laughs> there we go. And it makes it look really professional. So when we place it all together, and we've got, let me move some of my rubbish out of the way, we've got our gorgeous pink candle, our bookmark potentially with a book that you want to gift, and then we've got our flower box there as well. Let me open that actually so we can see. So we've got our flower box with our gorgeous flower and our sentiment inside. How cute is that as a little self-care Mother's Day gift hamper, all handmade, all super personalized, obviously with colors and initials and sentiments and all things like that, but all really gorgeous gifts that I think anybody would love to receive for Mother's Day or for any other occasion. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching and following along with me guys. Um, if you recreate any of these or if you recreate any other kind of Mother's Day gifting um, projects, then please share them with us down below. We love to see them. And yeah, enjoy the upcoming Mother's Day. And I can't wait to see you in the next one, guys. But until then, stay safe and keep crafting. Thanks, bye.